Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Accelerated Technology Laboratories in the October edition of our 2018 LIMS webcast series. My name is Ken Ochi. I'm Manager of Global Marketing and Customer Relations at ATL, and I'll be your co-host for this webcast. Now, I'm very honored today to be sharing hosting duties with two of our customers, Patrick Visser, who is the Laboratory Director at Farmer's Edge, and Brenda Snodgrass, who is the Assistant Laboratory Director at the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Today's webcast is entitled LIMS Case Study, Growing Success in Agriculture. And for today, we wanted to focus on the valuable role that a LIMS can play in agricultural laboratories. And I'm excited about having both Patrick and Brenda participate with me. Uh, both are using our Sample Master LIMS, and both will be talking about how their LIMS has helped improve many aspects of their lab operations. So let's get started. So for today's agenda, I'll be, begin by talking about some of the key challenges faced by the agriculture industry today. I'll then summarize the role of a LIMS, or a Laboratory Information Management System, in today's agriculture laboratory. I'm then going to turn the microphone over to our two ATL customers. First, I'll introduce you to Patrick Visser, who is the Laboratory Director at uh, Farmer's Edge, an innovative company headquartered in Winnipeg, Manitoba, that's advancing modern agriculture through the use of field-centric data collection. I'll then introduce you to Brenda Snodgrass, who is the Assistant Laboratory Director at the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Now, in both cases, you'll learn about their organizations, the challenges they faced before they implemented our LIMS, the benefits that they've gained by implementing LIMS, and finally, why the LIMS is a necessity that they could not live without. Then we'll do a quick wrap up. So when we talk about some of the key challenges in agriculture today, um, the one thing I wanna say is that uh, ATL has quite a few customers in this space. So naturally, uh, we're able to keep up with what's important to laboratories in this space. Uh, and so here are some of the key challenges that I wanted to make sure that we focused on for the purposes of this webcast. First up is ensuring a face, uh, safe food supply. So even before a grower can do testing on crops like wheat, fruit, and vegetables, uh, there needs to be testing on the soil, pesticides, and fertilizer to ensure food products delivered to market are safe to eat. Uh, the food supply in agriculture also refers to the meat and poultry products that end up in our neighborhood grocery store. So here, proper testing of feed products must be conducted as part of the food chain. Uh, agriculture testing is very diverse and unique, and new innovations in this area are constantly being introduced. The key here is having an organization structure and technology platform that's nimble enough to adjust to changes in testing methods and processes. Now, one area that's gaining traction for agriculture labs is the application of biotechnology or agritech. And here we're talking about genetic engineering to modify living organisms, including plants and animals. A uh, constant challenge in the ag world is the constant pressure to improve productivity or yield to meet the increasing demand to feed the world. And also, uh, another constant challenge in this industry is the need to adapt to changing regulatory requirements. In the case of government laboratories, it also means the need to have cooperation across multiple agencies at the state and federal levels. Now, for the benefit of those attendees today who are new to LIMS or Laboratory Information Management Systems, I just wanted to spend just a couple of minutes here just kind of doing a level set as to what a LIMS is and what it should really do for you and your agriculture laboratories. So um, this definition of LIMS actually is taken directly from Wikipedia. I'm not going to read through it. The thing I really want to do is really what I wanted to do is uh, kind of distill what we believe a LIMS should be. And this is a definition also that our customers over the past 25 years have also said uh, this really hits the mark. Um, so in our mind, a LIMS is a software-based system with features that support a modern laboratory's operations. In terms of what a LIMS should do for your laboratory, these are some of the key um, critical criteria that our customers have said to us were important factors on why they decided to invest in the LIMS and why they decided to choose ATL and our two LIMS products, uh, Sample Master. Uh, and again, you'll you'll hear from Patrick and Brenda on their use of Sample Master. But we also have another LIMS product called Titan. So in either case, uh, our customers have told us that 
in terms of Olympus should do for you, obviously, first and foremost, should be able to securely manage data at every stage of sample management. A limb should be able to increase the laboratory's efficiency. So key factor here is being able to eliminate errors from transcribing data from bench sheets and being able to do with fewer resources. This is especially true in Brenda's case where they've had uh, budget uh, cutbacks and staff reductions. And as a result, they've had to rely on limbs, uh, especially over the past few years as they've gone through um, these, these budget challenges. Regulatory compliance is a very key factor, especially in the agriculture industry where you've got to be in compliance with um, um, regulations from FDA, USDA, uh, as well as some of the other uh, food regulatory uh, requirements or standards. And that would include um, the Global Food Safety Initiative, or GFSI, as well as, more importantly, over the last few years, uh, FISMA, which is the Food Safety Modernization Act. Being able to enhance communication across the organization is also very critical for many organizations, uh, not just in the laboratory, but being able to take that data that you generate in the lab and being able to communicate it to other departments uh, throughout your enterprise. Standardizing on business practices is one of the things that happens as a result of implementing LIMS, so that's important, as well as for those in the uh, commercial space, being able to provide competitive advantage. Uh, and in all cases, you know, the bottom line here is to uh, invest in the LIMS to make more efficient use of time and to save money. Now what I'd like to do is introduce you to our first customers, and the name of the organization is Farmer's Edge. Uh, they were founded in 2005 by two agronomists, Wade Barnes and uh, Curtis McKinnon, who wanted to assist growers improve their farming practices, increase profits, and create more efficient cropping systems. The company is based in Winnipeg, Manitoba, with over 550 employees in five countries. And in terms of uh, a key focus in one sentence, uh, their mission is integrating field-centric data, predictive modeling, and advanced agronomic an analytics. And through that, Farmer's Edge provides precision dig digital solutions to help growers produce more with less. And to walk us through Farmer's Edge and give you a real detailed understanding of their organization and what they do with LIMS and what the benefits have been, I want you to introduce you to uh, Patrick Visser, who's the laboratory director at Farmer's Edge. And with that, Patrick, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Ken. Uh, just as uh, Ken has introduced me, it's uh, my name is Patrick Visser, uh, lab director at Farmer's Edge. I want to give you a bit of an introduction to to Farmer's Edge as a whole, and then let you know about how we've we use ATL Sample Master to solve problems in under my domain in the in the laboratory and analysis part of things. So Farmers Edge is a we provide data management and decision making software tools for farmers uh, to make good scientifically based decisions uh, that increases their productivity and profitability, and also allows for stewarding of sustainable crop production. So Farmers Edge does this annually on about 22 million acres across Canada, the United States, Brazil, and Russia. Um, our main focus is is around the types of decisions that farmers are making uh, in, during every crop year. So we've got about 50 decisions uh, that we help try and influence, and that can be for for a grower can be anything from what crop should I be planning to grow, what variety of that crop, when should it be planted, what sort of field operations are going to be going on during the season. Are we going to be you know, making some applications of a, a fungicide? Questions arise like uh, what rate and and uh, and when should this this type of uh, activity be be done? Each de decision they make affects the next, and ultimately this affects the uh, yield and and farm profitability. And that's where the value of how Farmers Edge manages and analyzes data comes in. So the biggest challenge that we have in in uh, achieving this in the realm of data collection and management, uh, we we use uh, satellite imagery that. Um, that's collected during the uh, growing season. Um, we collect other in-season data like uh, with our weather station network. Uh, in Canada, we have about 4,500 weather stations that provide field-centric data, things like um, uh, temperature, humidity, wind direction. All of these things can uh, affect things like modeling crop growth and crop maturity. can also help plan things like how, um, uh, how pesticide or a um, 
uh, in season pressures like disease can can move and 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 change and how a farmer can can respond to that. We also collect uh, information directly from the tractor cab, and that can be during planting operations or spraying operations, and of course harvest. So we have some telematics devices that go directly into um, into those um, into those farm implements, and we collect that data as well because that's all all going to be used later for decision making and then analytics uh, analytical uh, properties of the um, of the overall profitability of the, uh, the the operation. Of course, then we have, this is where our lab comes in. Uh, we've got one laboratory in, in Winnipeg, and we've got a second one that's just opening in, in Iowa. And this is where the soil sampling and analysis comes in. And that, of course, uh, is nutrient analysis uh, that goes on uh, after the crop is, is done and right before the crop is seeded. And that influences uh, most directly things like uh, what sort of prescription will be uh, applied for fertility to that field. We opened the lab in 2009, uh, starting in, in Winnipeg, and primarily what we're focused around is just the soil nutrient analysis. So we start to get busy at the end of August, and we go right through until uh, January, uh, collecting uh, soil samples from the field uh, all across Canada, get them into the laboratory. And it's a fairly high volume laboratory, so we're receiving between 12 and 1500 samples per day. And we had the challenge when we first built the lab in 2009 of how it was that we were going to manage that volume of samples, continue to grow into the future as we as we ramp up production, and then also be able to handle the the uh, the data in an efficient manner. So some of the testing we we do there is is kind of the standard soil nutrient uh, analysis testing. With that sort of volume and the number of parameters that we're measuring, we end up handling about 30,000 discrete data points per day. And we've been able to to manage that, uh, not only not only manage it, but then thrive and 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 do it very successfully uh, with the use of sample master uh, limbs. We do result uh, to deliver those test results in in three days, so it's a it's a fairly quick turnaround time, and uh, that means we're 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 always looking for good tools to be able to to solve these uh, these uh, challenges. What we really wanted to f uh, to find in a in a limb solution for us is one that really conforms to our lab process goals and that that's throughout the entire lab process from from the time the sample is registered to the time it's it's reported first challenge for us was in the volume that we're receiving in the lab uh, is is being able to get those samples registered very quickly and having the tests uh, assigned we're able to log in about seven to eight hundred samples per hour uh, and assign all the testing so that we're able to get those sample IDs generated and then get that soil from the initial receiving process into the sample drying and sample preparation. So we really wanted to be able to condense that time a fair bit uh, because data entry does does take some time and, and uh, we have been able to manage that quite well with the, uh, with the limbs. Next problem to solve was really in the lab and, and how technicians are going to be able to have their workday organized very well. So they're able to be effective and able to meet those production goals. So that's that's in kind of the QC batching, which is organizing the samples by test in such a way that the technician can collect them very quickly. They've got a, a bench sheet that they're able to work from to be able to prepare all those all those samples. After we solve those issues, we really need to be able to manage uh, the data very well. So we've got a, a number of different instrumentation uh, or in, uh, instruments that we use to be able to uh, to manage our, our actual analysis. Uh, we've got uh, a number of uh, segmented flow analyzers. We have uh, four ICP uh, instruments. We've got some custom built uh, robots for doing uh, pH, EC, and then buffer pH as well. And then even our, our balances are connected directly into our limbs. So with the instrument workload management, we're able to sequence our instrumentation with uh, the workload that they're going to be getting. And then conversely, reversing that whole operation is once the samples, uh, the, the, the tests are collected from the instrument and we have our values, how are we going to very quickly be able to get that back into our limbs and uh, and then and then go on to the, the reporting uh, stages? So that's been that two-way operation of sequencing the instrumentation and managing the data as it as it's collected uh, is completely done in an automated fashion and uh, allows us to handle a, an awful lot of work um, very quickly and then have the assurance that that we don't have things like transcription errors or or cost in time for for managing that data. 
Lastly, I'll, I'll touch a little bit on uh, result reporting. So we have a very unique uh, solution that we've been able to to manage with uh, with the sample master limbs, and that's kind of the next stage is is looking for limbs that conforms with the business process as much as the analytical process. So our farm command system is a, is a, is our kind of our our central tool that that both we use internally, but uh, is an interface for uh, for farmers and growers to be able to uh, to make decisions from. So we directly report uh, via our API set in the farm command system directly from our lab in the sample master limbs uh, and it's done as the samples become available so this is a fairly live transfer of data and that data is Im immediately available for things like decision making um, you know during during the season and then also available for a data modeling team uh, to use our soil test results in order to to create uh, things like crop models soil models and and um, and so on and so forth. In addition to the lab doing uh, a lot of internal work, we we do fee for service and and integrate with third party systems. And those systems are bi-directional, in the sense that we get pre notification from our our third parties that want to use our our testing service. Let us know about what samples are coming in, who they're for, what sort of testing is required, and then once we're done our uh, the lab process we're able to deliver our product, which is the soil analysis, directly into the customer system. And so it's available for them in a, uh, in a in a format and in a platform that they're most familiar with. So we're really able to to satisfy that specific need and it, it varying by, by client. One really important tenant to us that we've been able to solve with ATL's products is we're able to adapt to our changing demand. So you might imagine opening the lab in 2009 and, and with the success that Farmer's Edge has had, of course, we haven't had a, a very static workload. It's continuously increasing and the demand is getting you know, larger. So you know, more results and, and as quickly as possible. Uh, so I I hold that a, a static limbs is not a successful limbs. It, it must be able to, to meet the demands of a changing business or changing um, uh, changing expectation. So what we've done to extend the limbs is it it it's used as part of our uh, enterprise um, systems to achieve some business insight in so far as being able to predict what the demands are going to be for you know, the lab, but then also field operations. We can model out you know what kind of growth we're expecting, and we can model out you know, time of year when we're going to need more uh, more staff either in the lab or out in the field. And we've got some interesting things that we use uh, the limbs for um, for our own purposes within the laboratory, and that's uh, that we track instrument performance, so sensitivity, uh, throughput, that sort of thing. And so we can kind of start to estimate things like instrument lifespan and then start to estimate when it is that we're going to have to add more instrumentation or more human capital for that matter. So all of these, uh, all of these th things that are concerns to us as far as to be able to be successful have been uh, achieved through ATL Sample Master Limbs. We've we've used it for for quite a long time. It's grown with us, and it's really provided a lot of uh, valuable tools uh, for us to be effective. So, with that, uh, Ken, I'd like to pass it back to you, and uh, appreciate uh, appreciate your time today. Thank you very much, Patrick. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick has done presentations with us before. Uh, he's been a great advocate for our company and our limbs. And he's also been uh, one of those unique individuals who's been able to take the needs of the business and understand how the limbs can really be optimized to, uh, to, to meet their requirements. So it's great to have Patrick you on again to participate with, with us on one of these presentations. And I thank you very much. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the presentation here, we'll talk about uh, next steps and follow-ups. And one of the things that I'll make sure is that if you do have any questions for Patrick, we'll have a uh, suggested method for you to be able to uh, communicate with Patrick and get those questions to him. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to now introduce our second honored guest, the uh, Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry, or ODEF. Uh, this department is responsible for providing services and expertise that promote and protect Oklahoma's food supply and natural resources while still stimulating growth. The department's mission is to protect and educate consumers about Oklahoma's agricultural and livestock production 
And the department is also focused on developing and executing policy on farming, agriculture, and food. Brenda Snodgrass is the Assistant Laboratory Director for ODEF, and we're very honored to have her, her here today to talk about her department, her laboratory, and uh, the role of LIMS in the laboratory and the benefits that the LIMS has brought her lab operations. And with that, Brenda, please proceed. Thank you, Kim. Um, and thank you for having me today. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, it's a, a great honor to be here. Uh, as Ken mentioned, I'm from Oklahoma. Um, this is a shot of our laboratory here in Oklahoma City. Uh, in, in addition to the uh, missions of our agency that Ken was talking about, um, our laboratory primarily functions as a, um, as a testing laboratory for our regulatory functions within the department. And we also do some testing for other state agencies. This testing is done primarily to uh, protect Oklahoma consumers and Oklahoma citizens and level the business playing field for all of our producers, whether they be small, medium, or large in any way that they're involved in agriculture. Now, one of the really emerging issues and very important things in agriculture is the protection of the food supply. And we often like to say that we are protecting the food supply from farm to fork. So basically everything that gets done to the dirt and all the way through growing crops and feeding animals and uh, bringing those animals to market, bringing those crops to market, all the way to, the, to your table and into your mouth. We're trying to make sure that you have a good, safe uh, food supply uh, here in Oklahoma as well as in the rest of the United States. Here at, at Laboratory to Ser Services Division in Oklahoma, we're much like many other agriculture labs uh, all across the United States, in fact, all across the world. Uh, we perform a wide variety of agricultural, consumer, and environmental testing, and that involves multiple scientific disciplines. Uh, and when I say multiple scientific disciplines, I mean that we're using uh, chemistry, microbiology, bio biochemistry, and biology. Uh, that testing is primarily done for label compliance, uh, adulterants, any kind of toxins, or uh, animal disease. And I've listed on this slide uh, just some of the products and matrices that are tested here in our laboratory. Uh, some of those you'll probably recognize as traditional agriculture um, types of products or even uh, a matrix or so. Uh, when we're testing animal feed, we're testing uh, not only livestock feed, but we're also testing pet food. That is uh, chemical testing. We're do, we test ingredients. We test forage products. We test supplements. Um, and, uh, and as I said, that's, that is a chemistry discipline. Our bottled water testing, uh, our laboratory is responsible for making sure that bottled water, once it goes to market, is actually free from biological uh, contamination, microbiological contamination. And so uh, we have samples that periodically come in here that are bottled water. And that includes everything from the small bottles of water that you might buy uh, just out of a vending machine all the way to the big five-gallon bottles of water that sit on top of a water dispenser. We also test fertilizer, uh, milk and uh, milk products, uh, so ice cream, those kinds of things. Uh, we test uh, pesticide concentrates, pesticide tank mixes, um, and plant seeds. So the pesticide concentrates and tank mixes, that's going to be chemistry testing. The plant seeds, is that's going to be our biological testing. Um, those are tested, our, we test those seeds for germination, purity, uh, noxious weeds, um, just and we can test like i said everything from crop uh, forage grasses anything like that on the right side you'll see some of those matrices uh, which also milk is would be considered a matrix but it's also a product um we uh, we're also responsible for testing human food in the state of oklahoma um, whenever there's a foodborne illness uh, we can we actually uh, are the laboratory that takes the food product and we test it we can test it for microbiological contamination or chemical contamination, either one. Um, and then we can take that information and we send that back to our health department who has connections to the CDC and they can use that to help with tracebacks to find uh, clusters of uh, foodborne illnesses. We also test soil. Our soil testing is uh, for pesticide residues. We also test soil for fertilizer spills for nitrogen and phosphorus if there's a fertilizer spill then our inspectors go out and they collect those samples. Uh, they basically send samples to us for testing so that they can uh, identify the zone where the pollution exists. 
and then they know that they can dig that soil out, they can treat it and remove any of the contamination, whether that be a fertilizer or a pesticide material, and then restore it back. And so they, we can use that to map where that zone of, uh, of con contamination occurs. Uh, the serum testing we do is uh, microbiological. We test animal livestock, a livestock serum for the presence of uh, communicable diseases. Uh, so that it will include uh, cattle, swine, and horses in our laboratory. We test vegetation. Uh, primarily our vegetation testing is for pesticide spray drift complaints. So if someone has put a pesticide down in a field and that pesticide has drifted over and actually killed crops in an adjacent field, uh, we have inspectors in the department who can go out and again, they're, what they're doing is they're uh, collecting samples in the impacted zone and outside of the impacted zone so we can help them identify what the pesticide was that actually caused this damage. We do a lot of water testing in our laboratory. Um, that is not drinking water and it's not uh, like wastewater from municipalities or that kind of thing. Our, the water testing we do in our laboratory is for ambient water. Um, that would be streams and creeks and ponds that are non-navigable. Navigable. And we also test groundwater from contaminations from waste lagoons and feedlots that uh, may be located uh, in an area and we want to make sure that we're not getting groundwater contamination around those. Um, well, and then we have a whole host of miscellaneous types of things we test. Uh, that includes agricultural liming materials. Um, another example might be animal carcasses, animal waste. We assess animal waste sometimes so that it can be actually used for a fertilizer product. Um, and we can do air filters, uh, clothing, surface swabs, just a whole host of other items. So um, just to go kind of go through the history of um, our laboratory data management here at the uh, Department of Agriculture at Food and Forestry in Oklahoma, we uh, originally started off with a card file system. And you notice that picture to the right, if, um, if you were in libraries many years ago, and they may still use these, you might recognize those box with index cards. That's what our agency started with many, many years ago, back into the 50s and maybe as early as the 40s. That was how we were tracking our laboratory data. It involved all hand transcription and gen manual generation of the uh, data elements um, and the reporting. So you can imagine how cumbersome that would be. Well, in about 1980, we, uh, we moved to an electronic database and that was a pick that little picture over there to the right here. Um, this is uh, this picture. That is a CTOS system, which is Convergent Technologies Operating System. We actually inherited that system from another state agency, and we used that system for almost 30 years. It's a traditional client-server uh, system, and it the back end of that database was based on Oracle. So we had to have an Oracle person that actually knew how to set that up and anytime we needed to change things we had to go back to a programmer to do all of that stuff and so we outgrew that system probably about oh I would guess about 10 years before we actually stopped using it because it became so cumbersome to do edits and uh, we as we had changing needs and requirements in the laboratory we weren't able to do updates to that system very easily. So at the, in 2009 and thereabouts, uh, we started looking at our first laboratory information management system, or LIMS. Um, the first, first system that we looked at was a, a COT system, um, and you're probably familiar with that term, it's commercial off the shelf. The first commercial off the shelf software that we purchased was actually never implemented because it was not a good fit for our laboratory. Um, so we went back and went to um, a bid process and a seller and we we ended up with a commercially programmed or I'm sorry a custom programmed system that actually used a web browser interface so you might recognize some of those browsers here and the back end of that was on an Oracle database again um, Oracle is a is a quite a powerful tool but it also requires some people with some highly uh, high technical skills to do that work uh, we use that custom uh, that customized programmable system from uh, we started it in 2006 and it took us till 2009 to go live with that. Uh, it was a huge undertaking uh, in the process. We did a really good job of, of defining what our workflows were, what we actually needed, our, what our processes were, what we actually needed to put out at the end. 
uh, but just took a long time to do it. Our project ended up going over budget. We had cost overruns of about $400,000. And in the end, that system ended up costing us $1.2 million. And it was only about 90% completed when we started using it. And we used it from 2009 until 2015 when we brought along another caught system, which is Sample Master. And Sample Master has been uh, pretty much a blessing to our laboratory. Uh, it ha the system that we have in place has a Microsoft user, uh, Microsoft Access user interface, and uh, it works on the SQL servers. And so that part that we purchased that system in November of 2014, we did um, stage implementation. And so as we moved through 2015, we were bringing sections up, uh, parts of our laboratory up on our on this limb system on Sample Master. And so we, at the end of 2015, we actually went back and we shut down our complete custom program system. And now we're, we are using Sample Master. So I, just, in, uh, just to go over a few of the elements of laboratory data, that these are fairly common in most laboratories. Um, we, we have incoming information. We have information that we generate internally as we're doing our testing and our, and then we have outgoing information, which includes our reports and invoices. So um, it, whenever samples come in, we typically have something like a sample name. We have a sample description. We might have a product manufacturer or producer, uh, whoever the person was that gathered that sample up, what, where they collected that sample, the date and time that they collected that, and then they, they ask us for requested tests. So that all that information comes into the lab on a piece of paper, and we actually do a data entry and enter that into our system. And then once we get it into our system, we're in that internal process. So we need to capture the time and date we start analysis, what our testing procedure is, our test portion sizes, uh, when we have to use calibrations, which is fairly often where we're having to do calibration information. We have raw data that is generated out of our testing. Sometimes that is a handwritten worksheet. Sometimes it's a, it's a high-tech high piece of laboratory equipment. And so it can involve reams of paper sometimes. You know, 20 or 30 pages is not uncommon to have for a sample of raw data. Um, using all of that information, we actually come up with results for those requested tests, and we also have our quality control information in there. And ultimately, what our customers end up getting are analytical reports and invoices. Um, so in doing, as we work through a lab, I'm just throwing up here a, a, an example of a workflow. Um, and this can be sample-centric or it can be batch centric. That is one of the beauties of a system like Sample Master. Uh, and I'll just kind of explain a little bit about what this, um, what's going on on this slide. So we have an end customer. Sometimes that is an external customer and sometimes it's one of our regulatory divisions. That either, in either case, they take the sample and they submit it to our lab for testing. Once we get that in our lab, we assign a, a lab number, which helps us track that lab, that sample all the way through our system. And we log that information into a logbook and it goes into Sample Master, which is we're actually getting rid of paper logbooks and moving entirely to, to an electronic system. So Sample Master has given us the comfort to start letting go of our paper. That's one of the really nice things about it. Um, once we get that into a system, we, we create a worksheet for our analysts, and then those analysts go and perform the tests. They fill out the worksheet, and they compute test results, and then they come back and they enter those test results into a limb system, Sample Master in this particular instance. They update uh, all of the information, uh, the date it's tested, that we uh, print out a worksheet for the final report generate an invoice, that invoice gets mailed back to a laboratory customer. Um, excuse me, right there, where we, where we go to the invoice. Before we actually send that invoice out, we're, we are reviewing those results, making sure they're right, uh, sending that to our lab customer. That 
report goes to them, the invoice goes to them, and then we are able to uh, receive payment and and um, close out that basically that work. So um, many of you, many other labs may have a similar process, and like I said, that can be a batch centric process. We use that for our water quality testing and our uh, our serum testing where we're testing for animal disease we get lots and lots of samples in on a test request form and so we need we would like to keep those in a batch we like to test them together and we like to report them together and we like to build them together we also use part of our laboratory as i mentioned we use a sample centric workflow that is where we get one test one one analysis request form form and we have one sample that goes with that and so we can by using a, a, the system that, like Sample Master, we are able to do one or the other. And that's really, really nice. We don't have to force our business practices into a software design because of the flexibility that we've gotten with the system. So some of the benefits that we have actually gained uh, with this, with our uh, Sample Master Accelerated Technology Labs uh, system is that we have gotten some significant efficiencies which have helped us cope with substantial budget reductions and loss of personnel. So um, we uh, originally, whenever I started at the lab, we had a staff of about 40 people. And over the last 20 years, we have gone from having 40 people to having 30 people working in our laboratory. Uh, and we have gone through some severe uh, budget cuts and budget reductions, and so this at this juncture, that limb system is very, very critical for us to have. So in addition to those efficiencies to help us cope with budget reductions and loss of personnel, again, we have streamlined tasks that were once only performed on paper. Remember those card files? Well, we're trying to move that to electronic. The other big thing that, that this limb system has given us is the uh, electronic data delivery. Now that's not only nice for us in the lab because we can transmit things electronically. We save on paper, we save on time. It takes it's immediate, almost immediate. It can go to the customer, but it's a huge advantage for our customers. We have some customers who um, get uh, this information and they have a lot of keying in. Uh, to, if they just get a piece of paper, they're going to be keying in a lot of information into their own databases or into their own uh, tracking systems. And so, if we are able to deliver that data electronically to them, then they get to actually go through it and they can import it into their system. And so there's not the chance of a, uh, a hand entry, a transposition or errors on data entry or those kinds of things. And so that's very, very nice for our customers as well. And they've been highly complimentary of that. As I mentioned before, we also, we can use a batch centric approach where we have many samples in a batch or we can use a sample centric flow workflow, which is a single sample, and we're just tracking that all the way to the, to the system. The other benefit that we've gained, um, as I mentioned before, we use an old system where we had to have a programmer make changes. Well, ATL's products are nice because they it allows us to do some customization. And so as our business needs change and our reporting requirements change or those kinds of things, we have scientific staff, and if they are knowledgeable in Visual Basic and SQL queries, they can actually do this themselves. We don't have to pull in a programmer. So, why LIMS is a must for ag, for Oklahoma ag? It helps us not only manage our workload, it helps us meet our customer requirements, and it helps us retrieve historical lab data and that might sound kind of minor to a lot of people but it's not so minor to us because we have had paper systems and systems we are never have never been able to pull our data back the the beautiful thing about the limbs is that if somebody calls and asks what we did two years ago we can still use this information in our limbs and we can go find that material that sample the results and those kinds of things and it's easy. You don't have to open file cabinets. You don't have to dig through tons and tons and tons of data bench sheets and workbooks and log books and those kinds of things to find it. But that's a, that there is a, a picture of uh, my lab staff. I'm not actually in this photograph, but um, 
we we are a pretty tight knit group and a pretty hard working bunch and I'd like to just let you guys know that that our staff really loves the system. It's it's brought us so many great benefits and it's uh, just a pleasure to work with. So with that, Kim, I uh, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you very much, Brenda. Very much appreciated. And uh, you know, on our side, it's been wonderful working with you and your staff. I know that you've uh, done presentations for us before, along with members of your staff in the past, educating our uh, prospective clients as well as others in the ag industry about how you use the technology. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending today's webcast. I want to give a special thanks, uh, again, not only to uh, Brenda, but also to Patrick Visser of Farmer's Edge for sharing, uh, for both of them sharing their slim success stories today. Now, we're going to follow up by email with a link to the webcast recording for those who missed today's presentation or would like others in the organization to view it. I want to also let you know that ATL has worked with both Farmer's Edge and uh, o ODAF to create case studies. So in that email that I'm going to follow up with you on, I'll include a link to our website so you can view and download, download those case studies. And if you have any questions for either Patrick or Brenda, please email me and I'll forward your questions to them and they can respond directly to you. Uh, there is my email address, kochi at atlab.com. And if you can just include the subject header October webcast, I'd very much appreciate it. And as far as next steps, we definitely would like to talk to you about your laboratory, so we'll be following up promptly and look forward to speaking with you. In the meantime, if you have any questions or would like uh, additional information uh, other than the uh, email that I'm going to send you with uh, the links that I talked about, uh, there are phone numbers. Uh, you can also email us at the address there, info at atlab.com. And then anytime you'd like to go to our website, you can do so. At, again, that's at uh, atlab.com. Just a quick programming note, our next ATL webcast is on November 14th, actually kind of a, a related uh, topic in terms of agriculture. And the title of that presentation is Selecting a Limbs for the Cannabis Industry. And with that, I want to thank you for attending and hope you have a great day.